just realized I'm wearing <laughs> not only are these workout sweats, I think these are my wife's. So uh, maybe edit this out, Richard. That'd be great. <laughs> I have zero clue if this is actually going to work. Let's find out together. Oh, this is heavy duty too. The old man's not going to be happy when he sees this. Oh! Damn! Oh, that hurts. Oh, damn, that's so freaking cool. What's up, it's Casey from Casey's Customs. I am putting a Chevy V8 in a 1990 Honda CRX, also converting it to rear wheel drive, and we're making sure it is laying rocker. Let's get to the footage. Need to sing a town, don't forget the dollar sign. How to sound, get a sound good, tell them get in line. We are back on the beautiful Honda Civic that I am putting a Chevy V8 in and also converting it to rear wheel drive. I just did a video on this on Tuesday and now today's Friday. We're going back to back. I did back to back videos on the 65 Mustang when I was trying to get the body put back together. It seems like it worked out pretty well. People liked seeing two videos go back to back. So that's what we're going to be doing on the CRX. In the last video, we got the frame basically buttoned up. We got all of our airbag suspension installed. We got the motor and transmission sitting in the car. Everything is actually mounted kind of lightly nothing is solid yet but it's not going anywhere and what i'm gonna do the main reason i'm doing this video I, I love the whole i'm doing them back to back spiel but to be completely honest with you i hate when vehicles are not attached what i mean by that is i don't like having the car in here and then like the front end kind of floating around the shop i want everything to be in one piece kind of like we did with the mustang i had it basically all buttoned up but the roof wasn't right and you know the windshields were laying over on the side we just gotta i, I hate that i like when it's in one piece it's easier to move around it's easier to work on it looks a lot better so that's what we're going to focus on this video and as you can tell it's not just as simple as bolting the fenders up I have to remake all this. Honda is obviously a unibody. It doesn't have a traditional frame. So it has a chassis that is part of the body. And this would normally go all the way out here and then connect to the front of the chassis. This is basically the frame cutoff. I know I keep saying frame, it's not really a frame, but this is the front end of the car. Whoops. Get that out of there. This is the front of the car and all this needs to be attached so that we can bolt in our bumper, we can bolt in our fenders properly, and all of it needs to be reinforced pretty heavy duty. You can't just make it light because even though it's a Honda, the front ends are actually kind of heavy on it. This piece here is probably 60 or 70 pounds alone. So you gotta have it really braced in really good. We need to not only tie it into the firewall, we need to be tying it into some frame rails that we're gonna have to make. So we have a ton of work to do. The good news is I ordered some inner fenders to get started. Wow. Those are gonna go on there just like that. And then we can actually build off of these to strengthen everything up. It kind of gives us a good idea on where everything's going to go. I don't know yet if they are going to work as is or we're going to have to modify the hell of them. We obviously need to cycle the suspension up and down. We need to make sure our wheels turn, all that fun stuff. So let's stop talking and dig in. fenders to finish up the frame and I completely realized that I have not done any of my steering yet. This is an S10 front clip so it had a power steering S10 setup and the steering box was actually way up here. I can't do that because the CRX is just bobbed like the end of my fenders are like right here. There's no way I could have done electric steering or power steering and I didn't need to because this is a tiny little car. A manual rack is fine. This is out of a Mustang. I had to do some stuff to make it fit. Also, since there's airbags involved, we have a ton of up and down we have to deal with. So I got this all kind of basically tacked where I wanted it. I'm gonna put some bigger tack welds on it so it doesn't go anywhere for now. And then we can finally get started on the inner fenders and finishing up the firewall. Okay, <laughs> we gotta recenter it, but that's okay. Perfect. That makes me happy. 
That was a giant pain in the ass. I had to tweak a couple things on the steering rack. I <laughs> I aired it all the way up, and then I aired it all the way down. The wheels went. They'll move a little bit on an airbagged car, but since we have so much travel, my wheels were just doing this. <laughs> so I need to order a couple new parts, but I got it basically where it needs to be. They make a longer tie rod in for those Mustang two front ends. I need a longer version because it's a little too short, but we're good to go. I got these inner fenders just tacked in place what i need to do now is put my front fenders on and start bolting up the front cross member or the front frame section whatever you want to call it i need to start bolting that up so that i know where i can cut these if i can run the whole thing i will but most likely i'll end up cutting them up in here and i also need to double check before we make any more mounts on these inner fenders that the fenders actually go on okay. Cause I can mess around, start making a bunch of cross bracing and then my fender doesn't fit right and it's all just needs to be cut out. So I'm gonna put the front clip back on and then we can kind of start making some mounts from here to the actual firewall. So let's put the front clip on. Okay, we got the front clip put on. I made sure my fender gaps were good. Everything is looking great. I had to trim these back a little bit, but I'm going to be welding in the piece that I cut out. Basically, it just needs to be at a little bit of a different angle. So it'll be more of like a straight down shot instead of as round as it was, but we'll be able to tie all of this in together, really strengthen it up. And then once I know... Basically, I got the sheet metal where I want. Then we're going to come in here with some square tubing and really, really reinforce it. But I'm so happy for where it is right there. Those inner fenders look awesome. We made a ton of progress yesterday. I absolutely love how these inner fenders are looking. I've made sure nothing hits as the wheels turn, so we should be good. I'm also setting all of this up with the airbags all the way down. So I'm not going to run into any clearance issues whenever the airbags are going up and down. Everything is looking good. The rack and pinion has been a little interesting. I kind of needed a couple different parts. And whenever the airbags cycle, it just, they're moving all over the place. You can't have that, obviously. So we got to do a little more work, but that's okay. I know where it's going to be for now. I just need to reinforce the living hell out of it. What I'm going to do today is start to finish up these inner fenders. I need to tie all this in to this front frame section. And then we're just gonna brace the living shit out of everything with a bunch of one inch square tubing that I have. The good news is since our motor is so far back, I just have all the room in the world up here. I originally bought a smaller radiator because I was gonna put it way up here. I can put the radiator any damn place I want now. So I don't know how I'm gonna do it. I mean, I might even end up putting my airbag stuff up here, like the controller, the compressor, all that shit. I don't know. We have lots of room for activities, but for now, let's start finishing up these inner fenders. God, they look so good when you look the video up. When you look the video up. When you hold the video up, it looks so good. All right, let's get to work. <laughs> look the video up. Yeah, the channel's been growing lately. We're doing good. I'm working a million hours lately trying to get these projects done, get some good videos out. And whenever you get to work in that many hours, sometimes the talking be hard. So my apologies. I'm sure because Richard is an asshole, he's going to leave all of that in. So hold the film up. <laughs> right, let's get to work. Jesus. <laughs> you better turn up. You better be there when I shake. All right, check out where we are. Unfortunately, it is not the prettiest frame section. S10 frames are not known for being pretty. And then we're trying to tie all of the CRX stuff into it. So we kind of got some funky angles I'm not in love with, but it's going to be okay. We're going to be using some CAD software, cardboard aided design. And I also have some quarter inch plate. And what I'm gonna do is tie in, basically all these little funky crevices are gonna get tied into this heavy duty frame now that this is our frame and it'll kind of clean all that up. One of the things that I wanted to do originally was just bring this all straight out over to here. Well, I realized this has to stay exactly where it is because of how much the wheel turns in. So basically I can only come straight out. I can't go in at all. So this piece here is gonna just kind of go right there and that's it. 
because we got to worry about our tire. But the good news is that two by four square tubing is super heavy duty. It's like eighth inch or whatever. I mean, it's just heavy, heavy. Shit. It's a giant pain in the ass working with it. it. Takes forever to cut, but it is very solid. And I mean, it's stronger than, <laughs> definitely stronger than the CRX chassis is. Definitely stronger than the S10 chassis is. So we're really beefing up the front end. And once we get all this tied in, I think we should be good. I might also have to do some sort of a hoop that ties in this to the firewall. You know, almost like a roll cage, but I don't know. We'll see. I'll, uh, whenever I get this part done, we'll air it up and down and see how strong the front end is. So I just need to take a break because, man, working with quarter inch plate and heavy wall square tubing, it is just, it's like being a metal worker and it takes forever. But let's quit bitching and get to work. Yes. Is it looking good? Yeah. Is it solid? Yeah. Damn it, take forever though. Still not even done. You better grab the next day. So yesterday I basically got the front frame horns all done and attached to the CRX. It looks really good. It took forever. This is all quarter inch plate and really heavy duty two by four square tubing. I need to do a couple other things. Um, I want to do another cross brace in here. I kind of want to get the radiator in there, seeing where it's sitting. Then we need to tie this frame into the firewall somehow. Really needs to probably be roll cage tubing and I have some, but I don't have any bent. So I don't know what I'm gonna do there just yet, but uh, we're gonna get after it. And hopefully by the end of today, we'll be able to air it up and make sure nothing is moving. Cause what you don't wanna do is air it up and then just watch this whole front end sink down. We really gotta brace the living hell out of it. So let's stop whining, talking and get to work. I have zero clue if this is actually gonna work. Let's find out together. I don't think it's going to. <laughs> gonna have been straight is the question. Oh, this is heavy duty too. Man. Oh, oh, I think it moved. Oh, it moved a little bit. Oh. Alright, ready? Let's go. Ooh. Shit, that ain't bad. I gotta try and actually make it match. Ooh. Oh, God, that's heavy. Ooh. Ooh, that ain't bad. Oh, shit. Well, that's a good workout. Okay, fun fact. I got that one bent, and it looks okay. I cut it in half. Obviously, I can't have a 20-foot stick. Well, even though this is only, I think, an inch and a half pipe, whenever I don't have the leverage, it does not bend. So, I found a piece of two-inch pipe, and I've added it to it. I need to make this one match that one, and then we can basically have our kind of inner roll bars done. So, it's a pain in the ass. Let's do it. So you can bend thicker pipe as long as you do it in several sections. If you only pick one point, it'll just kink and then you're screwed. So I had to bend it there, there, and there, but those match pretty damn well. I am very happy with that. The old man's not gonna be happy when he sees this, but I was actually using 
the marks to know where to bend because if i had the end of the pipe here i knew where to put it on the pole <laughs> yeah it's all right we, hopefully he don't watch this video <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. Okay, check this out. I got the radiator brace welded in. It's also basically working as a cross member as well. It still needs rubber bushing mounts. I don't have those yet. I got them coming. Can I do this one handed? Nope. Yep. Nope. <laughs> Are we really just going to stay here until it gets done? Yeah. We're staying in it. Yes. So I got the radiator mounted. It looks great. I bought this radiator when I thought the motor was going to be a lot more forward. So I basically needed the radiator to fit in the original spot, but be big enough for a Chevy V8. I believe they said this was out of a V8 Vega. So it should be big enough for a 350. The good news is if for some reason that isn't going to work out, I have all the room in the world to add a bigger one. I'm going to rock it for now. If it doesn't work out, we'll change it. The good news is with all this extra space, I can put some big old fans in there and do a uh, pull through style if I need to. But before we wrap this video up, I was looking at some of this inch and a half DOM tubing. These were just the extra pieces I cut off of those bars. I got to looking and I think I want to add a brace to this inner fender to really beef it up. And I kind of want to do that. What I'm going to have to do though is make one hell of a long cut on this and basically have it taper down to nothing at the top. And then we'll have a big long section to weld in. And then this is actually tucked inside the dash. So it'll be super strong. It'll be way in there. That's what we're going to try. I don't know if we can pull it off. I think it would look cool as shit too. Also, it will be plenty strong. It's probably already plenty strong, but you can always add more. Let's see what happens. some bumps here. The wheels are turning. <laughs> That's okay. I need to tie rod ends. She's brace, baby! Awesome. Man, that looks really good, too. Cool. Check out how it looks. Oh, it's not easy to do one-handed. Sweet. We got all this tied in very well. We are going to have to figure out a mount system so that we can take the body off, obviously, because all this is technically welded to the frame. That's one of the reasons I haven't welded everything fully, because I want to be able to make a plate to unbolt the whole body in one piece. That way, if we ever need to mess with the motor. I got to looking at it, I don't think there's any way to do it. 
Because even if I had the front clip off, you couldn't get that motor out, especially once we get the floor in there and shit. So I want to be able to just lift the whole body off really easy. And uh, if this wasn't welded to the frame right there, technically everything would come right off. So we're going to make some mounts for it. But this was a ton of work. I am so stoked. We actually have full frame, front to back. And now our front clip sits on there and all of this is adjustable so my horrible gaps that i have will be able to tweak there's a bolt there there's a bolt there there's a, there's bolts everywhere so everything has a ton of adjustment on it this whole fender can come in like another inch which is cool same thing with the bumper so very very exciting next video we will start getting that kind of sorted out oh also i said it in my last video I like these rims. These rims look good, but I actually kind of fell in love with the old S10 rims. Here they are right here. I'm actually going to send those to a place here in town and get them polished. And we might end up running the old wheels because, damn, they did look good. I do like these, though. These look pretty good, too. Sweet. I am going to pull this thing outside, and we will let the air out and call it a video. Very, very exciting. Man, there's been a ton of hours on this little thing, but finally, it is in one piece, and that is awesome. Now that we got the front end on, we can actually let it down, see how it looks. It looks crazy all the way up. <laughs> all the way up, it's lower than my belly button. Oh, damn, that's so freaking cool. Oh, man. I just realized I'm wearing, not only are these workout sweats, I think these are my wife's. So I maybe edit this out, Richard. That'd be great. <laughs> it's like lower than my belt buckle. I mean, that is about as cool as it gets. I obviously love them when they're laid out. Exhibit A, Exhibit B, Exhibit C, D, E, F, everywhere else in the world right now. But, man, that car, it really, really looks cool on the ground. <laughs> it's just not supposed to be. They're too small. Oh, man. I am really excited about this build. <laughs> we gotta get started on the floor. I gotta order some parts. I have horrible bump steer right now. I gotta definitely fix my rack and pinion. Right now when it goes up and down, the wheels are moving, which is just horrible because that's called bump steer. When you're driving, you hit a bump and your wheel moves, you're gonna just fall off the road. <laughs> it wouldn't be good. So we definitely gotta fix that, but it's not completely mounted. I just gotta tack weld it in there so we can change stuff really easily. But uh, yeah, we're gonna order some parts. Now we're gonna come in, get started on the floor, get started on the roll cage. I have a full roll cage for this, a main hoop, a back, and then all the way, I think, up a door bar. So cool, man. Also, people are asking, these two builds are not nearly as popular as this one, but people think I gave up on them. I'm obviously not, waiting on a couple parts for that. I got the parts for that. So I'm gonna get started on the uh, Impala. Probably gonna have a video on it next week. So don't worry, I'm working on everything. We're just, we're just working a lot. Also, Working on this guy, uh, gonna be doing some sheet metal work later today on this one. So just so many cool projects going on in the shop. Let's talk about merchandise. I have offered merch for a couple years now. It has never been great. It's always been through a third party and they would ship stuff out and the quality was never great. I didn't love it. So six months ago, I kind of started to work with them so we could hopefully keep an eye on it, make it a little bit better. We were actually printing some shirts in house. That actually made the problem much worse. It was just harder to control. I, some orders were getting missed because they weren't sending them over to me, so we didn't know about it. All that shit ends right, right now. now. As of this minute, we are doing 100% of the orders ourselves in-house. We have local suppliers of our hats and our shirts. This shirt here, you've seen me wearing these the last probably month or two. I wanted to test them out before we offered them. This shirt has been washed at least 100 times. The logos still look great. Same thing with the hats. I've been wearing this hat constantly the last couple months. We have revamped the website. Everything is going to be much more streamlined. It's gonna be much better quality. And now whenever you actually order something, you will have a tracking number. All that stuff will come instantly 
from the website. There's nobody that needs to feed us information about what orders are being placed. All that comes directly to my email. We are fixing that all of right now. So if you wanna go check out our new merchandise, our new website, and see how streamlined it is, go to caseyscustoms.com. Stickers, stickers, Monte Carlo stickers. They went out a month ago. Half of them came back for postage reasons. They changed something with a stamp or we used the wrong stamp. So the other half has went out probably a week or so ago. So if you have not got a Monte Carlo sticker, do not worry, it is on the way. One of the great things about having 100% control of that, if there is an issue, we find out about it instantly instead of finding out about it in a month when somebody sends me an email because they don't have a shirt. All that is streamlined now. So go check out the website, caseyscustoms.com. I promise it's going to be much better than it has been in the past going forward. So oh, thank you very much to everybody. The channel's been growing a lot in the last month and I'd love to see it keep going. So please hit that subscribe button. It means a lot to me and it helps the channel more than you can imagine. We've been building cool shit for a long time and we are going to continue keep building cool shit in the future. Hopefully you stick around for all that. Please hit that like button, comment, share, all that good shit they tell you at the end of videos and check out some more of my other videos. Peace, I love you.